quarantine edition, baby. <laughs> Welcome to the franchise episode COVID-19. And uh, I'm your host. <laughs> oh, man. The Daniel Ehrenberg. That's right. Uh, I'm the uh, I'm your co-host, the H strain. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. It's episode 197, COVID-197. I'm over uh, here on the ones and the nines. <laughs> I got me a wet cough, gang. You know I'm okay because it's wet. Oh, all right. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear. Um, we hope everybody's doing all right uh, in this global pandemic. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're here to make you laugh for a little bit. Um, oh, we hope you're staying in. Yeah, practicing Dan, social distancing social distancing which is i'm not against in general to begin with i've so. always been very pro social d henry you know i'm a yeah. massive social distortion fan and i can get on board with this one as well uh i'm doing it today i'm staying in i've already watched um god what have i watched today i watched that studio 54 movie with ryan Philippi. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hey, I'll tell you what I did watch, and I want to apologize, Henry. Drag, oh. Dragnet. Oh, oh, you found it funny. I've, uh, it's very good. I was wrong. I've been now, talking shit you... about that movie on this podcast. Oh, I know you have, but uh, w was that because you hadn't seen it since you were a kid? Or yeah. You just never... okay. I think it... I didn't get it. It's very funny. It's really fun. It's well made, well written. Yeah. Ackroyd's great. Uh, it, he's he, he's very funny. Yeah. It's, it's Tom Hanks before he got serious. You know, the other thing is I I've been obsessed with that rap at the end for all these years and I've shown it to a lot of people on YouTube and it's so embarrassing for both of those a lot about that. People and uh, and so that's what I took away from Dragnet. Now watching right. it as like a story <laughs> with like dialogue and jokes and stuff, I it's a lot better. That. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, that's I completely forgot about that rap at the end. Yeah, never anytime, forget, Henry. Anytime they have a rap in the '80s, you're gonna try to get Ackroyd involved. That's just kind of what uh, was going on there. Mm -hmm. Just yep. the facts. Man. I've never forgotten the rap. That was another. That was another thing where um, two towers of the hollywood community were crushed what's uh what, what, what is this i was now? making a 9-11 reference that's what i thought you were doing one of the best types of references the rap yeah the rap two towers in right. Ackroyd and hanks of course okay being taken down by unfortunate circumstances in this case a rap right. in the other case okay. a wow. terrorist attack Wow, that's a very Joycey and stream of consciousness fucking I gotta be inside your head to understand. All right. Very funny? No. Henry, let's talk about it. Evil Chris bequeathed to us the Texas Chainsaw franchise. That and he did. And what a franchise it's been. It's been a ride, is what it's been. It's been it's, a real ride. It's a wild franchise. You it, it, And it's interesting. We cut up movies on the show into twos, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I think this franchise perfectly cuts up into twos. You've got the first two movies, a singular piece of work, two okay. singular pieces of work by the vision of one man. Okay. All Tobe right. Hooper. Right, right. Then you've got struggling to, tr to crank this thing out into a slasher franchise in the 90s with Leatherface and Next Gen. I see where you're going with this. Then, story. Platinum yeah. Dunes reboot. We're going to make them fucking grindcore bullshit from, yeah. uh, from the aughts. Yeah, yeah. And now these two, where we're taking this, this newfangled technique of let's ignore all the sequels and we're going to make a spiritual sequel to the first one. You're right. You're right. They're paired uh, effortlessly. And and now this company that did these last two lost the rights. So we're I, we're on to a new phase. Yeah. Wherever that somebody, ends up. Somebody will pick it up. Somebody will pick it up for sure. It's true. Um, so let's let's start with uh, this one, Texas Chainsaw 3D. Yeah, let let's uh let's get into it. Uh, were you able to watch it in 3D? 
Uh, yeah, I, I found my 3D glasses that I had had from the Cave of Forgotten Dreams, with the, which I... S- <laughs> I have some 3D glasses that came with the Chuck Season 2 Blu-ray because they did oh. like a post-Super Bowl episode that was in 3D. Oh, there, you there you go. Yeah, no, no, no. I haven't watched anything in 3D since the Cave of Forgotten Dreams, and uh, I remembered why. I mean, and that was a really unpleasant experience. Uh, even it being a Werner Herzog doc, it was very unpleasant in the theater to have those on. And I just started wearing them upside down and making people laugh. I this, this past week, I went to go see Onward and then snuck into The Way Back, Henry. And yeah. um, it would have been perfect. Onward in 3D and then walk into The Way Back. That movie's about to start. It like it, I couldn't have planned it better myself. But instead, I went to go see a non-3D version of Onward and waited like 45 minutes between movies because I will not watch it in 3D. No, I, I, I don't blame you. I've, I've done that a million times to, to, to skip showings that are more convenient. I mean, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I do find it uh, interesting that you, you saw Onward and then went back and you could have gone back and then moved Onward. You know, I wanted I I would have preferred that, frankly, but Onward yeah. had earlier showings in the so day. So then you went back. Yeah, I see what you're doing, Henry. That's right. that's about as funny as my 9/11 bit, frankly. I don't think we're firing yeah. on all cylinders today. Yeah. Well, I think by not firing on all cylinders, uh, we are. You know who fired on all cylinders? <laughs> the Taliban. <laughs> all right. Texas Chainsaw 3D. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say it right here, Henry. Yeah. I loved this movie. Uh, Wow. Really? I, All I, right. I, listen, I'm going to come out of the gate strong on this one. And I loved it so much that halfway through the movie, I was like, is this a movie that people like secretly love? Like, is this yeah. like some qu- kind of secret classic? And right. so I went on to my Letterboxd and mm-hmm. I... You know, where I follow a lot of film critics and some listeners of the podcast. And uh, what I saw was nobody gave it more than a two. And a lot of people (laughs) gave it a one. And a critic I respect very much, another podcaster, Andrew Jupin, gave it half a star. Wow. Wow. Now, why would this surprise you, even if you thought it was great? I mean, does that surprise you? It surprised I mean, me because I'm watching this me. movie and thinking like, wow, what a rebound for this franchise. <laughs> Th- this is easily the best one since the Tobe Hooper days. And uh, uh, and no, people hate it. I'm trying to see where it is on my rankings. Yeah, you know, it uh, it's high. Yeah, I mean, I, okay, so. I, I didn't love it, but um, I definitely was not bored, and I definitely uh, thought it had some interesting takes on things. Um, I thought this I thought was, was a wonderful a film. It, okay. I do wonderful. want wonderful film. <laughs> what an adjective to describe one of these movies. It's it's wonderful. It's a wonderful experience. I thought this was a well-put-together piece of cinema. All right. Oh, mm-hmm. it's Italian now? Yeah. Is that, a, is that a tribute for Italy? Yeah, that's right. That's good. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's tough Grazie. over there. I, Grazie. It's tough over there. I hear the entire cast and crew of the new Pope has been wiped out. I'm sorry for laughing. It, listen, it, it's fucking scary out there. We Henry and I spent like 10 minutes before the podcast fucking stressing out about how fucking horrible the world is. So. Uh, me for getting an oil change today. <laughs> He's like, why the fuck would you get an oil change? And he wasn't kidding. He was very angry. And I was like, I, I needed to get it. And, uh, you know, I came right home. But it uh, had to be done. All In I- case when, when I have to vacate and everyone turns on each other more than they are now, you know, I have a vehicle that's up and running. Oh, it's true, man. You're going to be like fucking Cruz and Dakota Fanning in War of the Worlds soon. Yeah, I'm going to be the guy that got his car taken care of just in time. You know who <laughs> I'm going to be? Do you want me to pick you up? Is that you going to No, defend- no, I don't want you to pick me up. I'm going to be Tim Robbins, man. I'm going to lure everybody into my building and then kill them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy. Well, we can see at least that we're an unselfish people. That's right. Like Tim Robbins, our most unselfish actor. 
<laughs> Bob Roberts himself. Uh, Texas Chainsaw 3D was, uh, we have a new director. Of course yeah. we do. Um, John Lusenhop. Yeah, Lusenhop. And he was uh, he was coming out of the gate strong with his 2010 bank robber movie Takers, which had done surprisingly well at the box office. I remember when that came out. It just looked like utter. Oh, it's trash, oh, dude! Yeah. It's got. Listen to this cast, by the way. Listen to the cast of Takers, Henry. I'm looking. You got what? yourself Chris Brown, wife beater Chris Brown, right? Hayden Christensen. Yeah. Hey, Chris, of course. Anakin. <laughs> Matt Dillon's in there. You got Michael Lealy. Idris Elba, COVID-19 sufferer himself. That's true. Steve Harris. T.I. God, the names on this. Jonathan Shack, Paul motherfucking Walker. Wow, man. Wow. Yeah. Okay, what a film. So he had made that, and then he made Texas Chainsaw 3D, and he has not made another movie since. Well, uh, just a s- small point. Did Stephen King listed Takers on his ten best films of 2010? So it's got to be good. Yeah, yeah. He well, he knows what he's doing. Listen, King oh. knows film. <laughs> it scared the pants off of me. <laughs> Any anytime I see a horror movie, that says like that Stephen King quotes it. I'm just kind of I'm a little worried. No, no. What says, you're supposed to think, Henry? They always oh, put those on, and it's like, oh my god. But, it scared but Stephen he's King. the master of horror. How could he be scared? You know he's another the king one is of suspense. You know who another one is. They always they always take from Friedkin. William fucking Freak, and they they? always throw his... Yeah, I've noticed that. They'll throw him on, like, the Babadook or anything, and they'll just be like... And William Freak will be like, this is the scariest movie I've seen in 10 years. I and feel like any time there's a book by a comedian, there's a quote from Patton Oswalt on the back. <laughs> 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 oh, it's got the Patton seal of, pr- of approval? Seal I'm approval. in. This thing's going to make me laugh. I watched uh, Mark Maron's uh, stand-up special, by the way. Oh, how was it? I haven't watched it yet. It's good. Uh, I, it, it's more <laughs> insightful than it is funny. Yeah, that's what he's doing these days. He brings yeah, out yeah. a stool. Yeah, it's more like a... T- I felt like I was kind of getting a, like a small lecture. But it was yeah, very I, I, he treats it like a one-man show. Yeah, it was, it was good. It was a fun time. fun time. Hey, right. we have uh, three new writers to talk about. There, uh, Two of them are ladies. Could you believe yeah. it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Adam Marcus and Deborah Sullivan were uh, yeah. were two of them. So Adam Marcus, we talked about him in the past because he's got a writing credit on uh, Jason Goes to Hell. Yeah, but uh, right. I mean, other than that, just like some bullshit. Some of these horror guys just work forever, and and they just keep on making these movies that you'll find on the in, in the bowels of Shudder. Yeah, it's true. I, I mean, that it, I guess part of that must just be the genre, right? They feel like it, they're they're in a particular genre. They probably just can keep getting work on somebody who's churning out unoriginal horror movies. They're like, oh, that guy worked on Friday the Thirteenth. Let's get him over here for that. And right, it's got to be something like that. It is, it's gotta, of course. Like it, it's like a got to be a little bit incestuous of an industry. Yeah, it's it's a little it's a little um, niche industry there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Adam Marcus works with Deborah Sullivan, and then there was a draft by uh, Kristen Elms. How about that? Really earning her horror cred. Who who the fuck is that? What do you mean? Then? How about that last name? Nightmare on Elms Street. Ooh, oh wow! Nice, How about nice that? catch. Nice catch. Nice catch. Uh, new I mean, who else? Who else? Uh, what, what's her her mother's maiden name? Huh? K- 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 Kruger. Uh, could be like Saint. Could be like her first name. Could be like Sue Saint Elms. Could be like Sue I Saint love Elms. names like that. I love names that have a saint. Like Susan my favorite Saint James. My favorite Batman uh, uh, fe- uh, girlfriend is Silver Saint Cloud. Great. <laughs> <laughs> gonna be Pattinson's new love in the new Batman. Movie. I love I love all the character names in Batman. Harvey Bullock's a good name. Joe Joe, Joe Chill's I... great. Edward E. Nigma is great. Oh boy. All right. Yeah. 
Henry, uh, this film was released January 4th, 2013, probably the first film of January, the first film of 2013, I should say, at yeah. uh, a budget of $20 million. Whoa, where did that go? <laughs> that seems awfully high for this. Uh, you know, maybe some lokes, uh, maybe some of the... Uh, um... There's a little too much CG well, I was just going to say that, yeah. I mean, also we're doing 3D, right? So, Oh, great point, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's needless expenditure there. Which, by the way, watching this in 2D, and I'm sure we'll get to it, but it doesn't hurt to get to it now. Uh, I mean, I could probably count the amount of actual 3D. Yeah, every so the- often a fucking uh, uh, chainsaw would be yeah, uh, thrust I mean, at the camera and you'd be a, like, oh, I bet that was the 3D thing. Yeah, it's like, what a fucking waste of time. Like, I was relieved because I didn't have to sit through that kind of shit, but I was just like, boy, that's what they spent it on? Like, fucking six cheap thrills. I did <laughs> like when they were at the carnival and he threw the chainsaw at the camera. That <laughs> took me by surprise. Uh, that whole carnival sequence was, was very cool. Yeah, of course it was cool, because we're outside of a fucking shitty house for one goddamn time in this franchise. It, 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 I'm grateful to be somewhere else franchises. This was a this was a movie where, like, about a half hour into it, I realized that part of the reason I was enjoying it so much was it was telling me a different story. Yeah. I felt right. like I'd been told the same fucking story six times in a row. Yeah, you're right, and I, I actually felt a little bit about that with uh, Leatherface too, mm. with this, this follow up, which Dan didn't. Well, I d- <laughs> it is a different story. I'll give it that. It was just a story I didn't really like. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This film came in at number. Oh, it made uh, forty-seven point two million dollars at the box office. It was a minor success. And uh, it came in at number eighty-four at the box office, right under the Carrie remake. What was that? Okay. Uh, was that a Chloe Grace Moretz? Yeah, I think I saw that. I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it it's, sounds it's, memorable. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, Chloe Grace Moretz. I, I think she's good, but, uh, I mean, a good actress. But I know, you that, loved her in The Equalizer. She's good in The Equalizer, that's right. <laughs> well, that's a great movie, everybody. Check out The Equalizer. <laughs> eh, you don't have to. Yeah! I guess if you're in quarantine, you can check out The Equalizer. <laughs> you you had a lot of time to kill. Yeah. Watch the Twilight Zone from episode one through 3,000. I did. I have nine left. How many are there, really? There's like 160-something. Oh. That's actually, I have to say, we were joking off air, but that that's quite an accomplishment because that's like, that's TV history. I mean, that's that's really amazing. I mean, uh, I'm doing my did homework. You, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to give you praise. I don't want to do that. Um, <laughs> Why I'm not? impressed. I'm actually impressed. Like that's there's got to be some duds. A lot of duds. There's not a lot, but there are. A lot of Twilight Zone episodes. I mean, they're not all gold. No, no, no. They're definitely not all gold. But most of them at least have like a decent core idea. But yeah, you you every like fourth episode is like <laughs> really stupid. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Interesting. Yeah. I- all right, so it also made slightly more than R.I.P.D., the classic uh, R.I.P.D. Um, what was that? Jeff Bridges Protection Agency. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Passed on that, too. Yeah. Henry, um, let's get into it. Texas, a chainsaw, 3D. We get um, some opening credits to start with. Uh, I'm very intrigued by one credit in particular. I'm looking. Uh, which one? Uh, of course, in the cast we get introducing Tremaine Trey Songs Never Son. <laughs> they felt the need to announce that to the world. I love an introducing credit. It is one of my favorite types of credits, especially yeah, so- when nothing becomes of the actor. Yeah. Now, of I, course, I, Trey I, Songs is a is a massive success in the musical world. Is he still? Oh, he's still, yeah, big yeah. big name. Okay, but yeah. uh, he 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 petered out in film. In fact, he didn't appear in another film after this until like last year. Oh, okay, all right, yeah. Uh, what did you think of his uh, performance? Uh, you know, he was there. Uh, he was. Uh, he had a very well built torso. 
He provided he a dose of color <laughs> to the cast. We were we were saying that uh, you know, <laughs> listen, it's the first hey. b- black person in the lead hey. cast of these hey. movies. What are you gonna do? It's fine. It's fine. Yep, yep, yep. Mm-hmm. We got another black person in in Leatherface. That was nice. Did too. we? Who was that? A sheriff. I don't. Hoopa. Hooper. All right. Um. Yeah. So Trey songs, he was fine. We got a previously on Texas Chainsaw. I noticed they refilmed. Did you have any catch of this? Some of these were like reshot sequences I because they were shot in that. 3D. Oh wow! All right. Did you have to read that or how? I mean, I, I see. It, here's they just I, didn't look quite right to me, and it looked like they were trying to create some extra depth. So I yeah. figured it was a 3D thing. Very interesting note for our listeners. Yeah, well, the ones who are going to watch this thing. Yeah, that was interesting to me because when it's when they started with that, I was like, "Holy shit!" They really remastered the fuck out of the original. Like it looks great. And I was thinking, like, why didn't I get that uh, copy when I watched it? And then it also to me started to not look right. It looks too but- modern. Yeah, but not being the biggest fan of the movie, I didn't really trust my own eyes, and I thought, oh, maybe it could be. Maybe there could be, like, unused footage, but it was done well done. I mean, it was done well enough that I was like, I reckon, I mean, immediately, I was like, okay, that's, that's a good touch. And that's to establish that uh, we're ignoring the events of right, right. Um, <laughs> and yeah, because right after that, we get that big standoff, which is meant to take place, like, the same day that like Sally got away or whatever. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. you know, Sally is in like the police car and like tells them where the house is and they go to the house. Um, the Texas Chainsaw family has developed like 19 extra members that yeah. were not in the first movie. No. no. And they have like a weird Waco style standoff. Yeah. And it, this it's, this is the point right in the beginning of the plot where I, I sensed where some aspect of this was going, which did continue into the movie after this, which was that I believe we are now supposed to be at least having some sort of sympathy with the Sawyer family. Yeah. Which is very weird. <laughs> I mean, because if this is actually supposed to be a direct sequel to the first one, like that first one, we we saw them just like beat and torture and murder a bunch of kids. That's what I kept thinking of. I kept thinking of the first movie. And 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 I just kept thinking like whoa 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 wait but you know I... we're not really supposed to have sympathy with the Sawyer family necessarily we're supposed to have sympathy for Leatherface right for just yeah. this one sort of strand of the Sawyer family tree uh, because we're supposed to treat Leatherface like he's this big dumb mentally challenged lunk like fucking right, right. mutant like six right, foot right, five right. weirdo and yeah. like. Uh, and, and, and that kind of ultimately worked for me eventually. Yeah. I mean, I, I thought of a moment at the end of this movie of kind of like in, uh, alien versus predator when the predator grabs the remaining human and grabs her hand so they can leave together. And it's like team up time (laughs) when they're in the factory at the end. And it's like. Well, it's you know, a Beauty and the Beast thing, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's it was, like a, no, you know, it, it's it, you know, it's a it's a film convention that goes all the way back to King Kong, <laughs> and uh, and I think Texas Chainsaw 3D accomplishes beautifully. I actually did think it accomplished it, and and honestly, like you said about the scenery being refreshing, I just found it refreshing. I found it sort of had like a little relief. It was just like, oh God, all right, that's nice. Somebody get like this, a little partnership, a little, a little levity in some weird way, you know, even though it's completely fucked up, but it's like, it was kind of refreshing. And there's something interesting going on here. It's about, uh, oh, well, let's get into the plot. Yeah, there wasn't. So you see the, the big standoff outside of the, the, the fucking meat plant with the house. From the first yeah. movie. Good on some actors, some good wigs. Yeah, and um, you see uh, one woman is pregnant. Yeah. And uh, she gets kicked in the head, which I liked. <laughs> she, and she passes. <laughs> it was a good kick. 
Oh my God, these movies, man. Uh, you're not kidding like that. That's unreal. Like <laughs> that's how we're starting this movie. Pregnant lady kicked in the head. Like every horror, like major long running franchise we've done, Halloween, Nightmare, Friday, they all have violence against women. But these movies have like a particular particular grudge that's going it's it just so It's like vicious. Death Wish, man. Yeah, it's like so fucking vicious. It's like, oh my god. Uh, anyway, keep going because there's a something I have to bring up that I I almost forgot. So, so she go ahead. she gets kicked in the head. There's like um, a a police officer at the scene who is like, uh, and Leatherface is the only one to get away. He like runs out the back. Everyone they, else gets apprehended, down. either killed or brought to. Or I think everyone's killed, basically. Everyone's killed. You don't know what happens to Leatherface. You're not. I mean, obviously, you know. But they think they've they've killed him. And the sheriff, the black character in the movie, uh, no. <laughs> You're thinking of the next movie. Jesus Christ. No, it's a white dude. He um he goes and he's like, listen, you know, this lady whose head got kicked. I think we should take her baby. Right, that's one of the just one of the townspeople. Yeah, yeah. So they do, and it grows up into a really hot babe, and, <laughs> and she's played by Alexandra Daddario. Like the guitar strings, um, not not the greatest guitar strings to be honest, but um, <laughs> they're not they're not bad. It's not my my choice. Uh, but, but, would you like me to continue? What do you think can, about Dario? Is she better or worse than the strings? I mean, the, you know what? She's kind of like the strings. In a pinch, they'll work. Mm. Yeah, they'll work. She's good in True Detective. She's Woody Harrelson's uh, uh, girlfriend in that. She She's reminds par- me a lot of guitar strings, too, in that if I had them, I wouldn't know what to do with them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she's. Uh, it was weird. Uh, it's not a not the strongest uh, performance we've seen. But, I was uh, concerned. I was uh, I was genuinely concerned watching this movie that we'd be drooling over the two female leads too much on this podcast. Well, yeah, I know. Well, this is one of the more attractive casts on every level of any movie we've covered. Said it. Um, yeah, the uh, Nikki character too. Like, spe- like. Wow. Well, I'll get into her. Well, I won't ever, sadly. But um, Ale- <laughs> Alexandra Daddario, yeah, everybody knows her from True Detective. That was that's like her signature role. She was Woody Harrelson's like mistress or whatever, and she got naked on that show. And then I feel like she was like a huge Instagram celebrity after that it's because of that. Probably. Yeah, yeah. And they tried to put her into a couple movies. I feel like Hollywood decided like maybe she would be a movie star for a second. Yeah. Yeah. They put her in that Baywatch movie that kind of tanked. Yeah, I mean, they try. Yeah, that true detective sequence. I mean, it's it's so what the sex re- scene. Yeah, I mean, that's what it's so I just. Remember yeah, but it, also the scene where she's fucking with him in the bar when she's yeah. when he's with his wife. That's a great. Sequence. I, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but the sex scene is just very memorable because it's just very graphic, but it's also just so kind of sad and uncomfortable and fucked up. Um but yeah, uh, question. So the movie takes place, well, you know, 1973, 1974. Wait. The, Texas the Chainsaw 3D? Beginning, the beginning. Okay, the okay. Okay, okay, okay. So now nothing in the titles, nothing in the story uh, leads me to believe that we are not in 2013 so am i to believe that alexandra daddario is you know 40 (laughs) um i i think what we did henry was we made a sort of a sliding time wait this the movie takes place in 70 the end of the first movie so the first movie daddario would be born in 74 yeah, at the at the latest. You're right. She's supposed to be forty. The whole time I'm watching it, thinking it makes sense because she's supposed to be like thirty, but she's not. She's 
Yeah, I that's mean, stupid. It, we're it's, in 2013. It's, it's, like we're in a, it's like a sliding time scale where, like, if you want to read, like, X-Men comics, you have to just sort of – or, like, or like if you have to – if you read The Punisher, like, you keep having to push which war he was in. <laughs> like, in the original Punisher comics, it was, like, the Korean War or something or Vietnam or whatever. And, and now, like, oh, they allude weird. to him being, like, a veteran. It's like, oh, I guess like- he was in Iraq. <laughs> Like Iron Man, he started in Vietnam, right? And now it's like he's he, yeah, he's, right. No, like so that was bizarre to me because all it needed was just to say like eighteen years later. That's all it needed to say, but it didn't say anything. So I was like, what a weird fucking omission. Like because everything else in the movie seems like it's twenty thirteen, especially my LVP, uh, the fucking idiot friend of uh, Trey Songs. What? <laughs> Kenny. I liked Kenny. Those fucking earrings and all that shit. Kenny, of course, played by uh, the editor of the Sunnydale High School newspaper from that one episode of Buffy, season three, episode 18. Earshot, written by Jane Espenson, postponed in the wake of Columbine. I will never (laughs) feel like I have a brain that is full of useless trivia because you always make me feel better. Yeah. Huh. Uh, I'm happy that I can. You can pick a year in 230 years, and I can just tell you who's president. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, you could name a season and an episode. I'll tell you what Buffy it is. I know. It's the, these are <laughs> all right. Let's do it right now. 1838. All right, that would be Martin Van Buren. Okay, now you go. Season four, episode four. Mmm, fear itself. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween episode. A phrase coined by President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, president from 19... 19- <laughs> That's right. 1945. Okay, wait, I want to go one more time. 1913. Woodrow Wilson on March 4th. Prior to March 4th, it would have been Taft before mm. Inauguration Day. Okay, you go. Season, how many seasons were there? Seven. Season six, episode ten. Mm, it's called Wrecked. It's the only episode that season written by Marty Knoxon, I believe. Um, great stuff. Willow has a magical overdose. Henry, let's we're talk about people. I mean, that's all there is to it. We're impressive guys. <laughs> sure. Everybody knows that already. Everybody knows that already. All right. All right, so we meet our characters. Alexandra Daddario is that baby from the beginning whose mom got kicked in the head, and she um, uh, does not get along with her foster parents, and they make fun of her for being slutty and stupid, and she yells at them for being rednecks, assholes, and shit. They're just sniping. She's ready to get the fuck out of town. She is, and she goes and starts her own guitar company. And that no, that's a different. Mm. Uh, all right. So she's best friends with um, Tanya Raymond, who, of course, everyone will remember as Ben Linus's daughter on Lost. <laughs> I never saw her in my life. Yeah. You don't remember her? She's Alec. Hey, Henry, do you remember? Um, in the early seasons of Lost, there was the French woman. <laughs> Remember, I only saw the first two. Yes, but remember, Saeed found yes, in the woods. Yes, the I remember Saeed. He found the French woman, Danielle Rousseau. Vaguely. And, and the French woman was always talking about how she had a daughter named Alex, and they thought she was crazy and that she wanted to kidnap Claire's baby. And then it turned out she really did have a daughter, but she was kidnapped by the others years and years ago, and it was this girl. Oh. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. I've seen her in other stuff too. She's pretty good. She she's she's very good. She's very 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 good. Yeah. Um and <laughs> she's she's fine. She's pretty good. She, she's fine. So um she Alexandra Daddario is dating Trey Songs, the right. great R&B performer. And then um you've got uh um, You you said that word like uh Barack Obama says Performer. Okay. It's a great R and B performer. <laughs> Trey Songs. Trey Songs, yeah. Tanya Raymond 
um, recently went out on a date with one of Trey Songz' friends, played by that yearbook guy from Buffy, or yeah. newspaper guy, and um, they got along. It was a good date. But unbeknownst to Alexandra Daddario and what we find out in the frozen food section of the supermarket <laughs> um, is that Tanya Raymond once fucked Trey Songs when they were drunk. And, 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 he, and she wants to fuck him again. But he's, he's living that monogamy life, even yeah, yeah. though she is just seemingly constantly touching his dick. I feel like that's her move. Like, oh, like yeah. she just like sidles what? up to you, puts her hand on your dick, and assumes you're ready to fuck. What, does she need another move? I mean, what move does she need? Does she need to coerce him with candles and music? You know, I mean, no. it, it feels like she probably got him that first night by like getting drunk and partying, and then maybe they were having a meaningful conversation and they connected uh, more uh, than they thought they were going the to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, he does say we did like 15 shots of tequila. That was the order up guy. I, I hope that was the order up guy, Henry. <laughs> yep, that was just Henry doing his um, diner fucking. <laughs> 15 times to get it. You see the, you see the similarities there? 15 times to get it. Now that guy's Greek, right? I'm kidding. Yeah. Uh, Greek? No, 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 no. I don't think so. I, I, I've never seen the Order Up guy. You've never I, pictured from... the Order Up guy? Yeah, I have. And I picture like Dennis Haysbert behind like Dennis fucking... Haysbert. <laughs> yeah. Like an eighty-year-old Dennis Haysbert. What the fuck? Then why are you doing the voice all high like that? Ah! Fat but... cheese, mate. Fat that cheese. doesn't sound like Dennis Haysbert what he's gonna sound like in 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 20 years his voice isn't gonna go up 28 octaves <laughs> Maybe it's like an aussie davis going on uh, there like you picture him black you're doing a black uh, voice no but i just picture the i picture the order up guy black in my head that's what i pictured <laughs> because i was thinking about when i first you picture character. one of these eddie murphy makeup characters i think <laughs> Maybe, but you know where you know what it actually is. I think when I originated the character, I thought of the character Dennis Haysbert plays in Heat, and his original job in it is a, a, a short order cook, and he yells, "Pick up!" <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I pictured. If you can remember Heat, when they pick up Dennis Haysbert to do the robbery. That was the origin story. Origin story, folks, of, of the order up guy. Who thought that you'd get that? Yeah, great stuff. Patreon.com slash the franchise for more on that great character. Um, <laughs> Featuring full biographical details. Yeah. So what happens is uh, Daddario gets a letter in the mail um, saying that she needs to come down to, what is it, Newt, Texas? Yeah, very, very odd. Yeah, yeah. I thought I misheard it as a character's name yeah, at first. Yeah. It's a small Texas town. And it seems that her grandmother has passed away, at her you know actual blood grandmother, and yeah. she has been left her house. Another continuity fuck up that happens when we f watch the next movie, of course, because this old woman is supposed to be Lily Taylor. <laughs> I know, which is ridiculous. But um, so what ends up happening is they. They get all into a van, as you do in these movies, and they decide oh, they're yeah. going to drive to Newt. And the, it's, the, it's that crew. It's Trey Songs. It's his buddy. It's Daddario. It's Tanya Raymond. And they yeah. drive down, and they, on the way, they pick up a hitchhiker, um, and I, which I assume is just an homage to the previous movies. Because, and he's like cannon fodder. He's the first one who dies. Daryl. Yes. That's it's his name, Daryl? Yeah. Oh, yes. just like just like my favorite character from The Walking Dead. Ride. The, the, Ride, I Henry, know. with Norman Reedus, my favorite show. Uh, it's, it's on air right now, Henry, for its like ninth season or whatever. Oh, is it really? Yeah. I uh, quit. As you know, I quit Walking Dead. So. I know. I'm, I'm proud of you. Yeah, so Thanks. that's this dude, Daryl. I didn't really know this actor from anything, but he's been in stuff. I thought he was good. You thought he was good? Okay. <laughs> Well, he fooled me. 
you know, I look for what I can look for in these movies, and uh, <laughs> I grasp what I can hold. He was and, fine. Uh, Everyone he, felt committed in this movie. I, I, I feel like we were making a movie here. You know what? It didn't look like the previous two movies in that it didn't look like everyone was being subjected to a miserable experience. Fewer close-ups, I noticed. I didn't notice yeah, that. Yeah, we're, we're looking at wider hey. shots, more people in the frame. A little less sweat constantly. Uh-huh. Yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah. I just I feel like this would have been a more pleasant experience for for people. Much more yeah. pleasant. So we're riding down to Texas for a a reading of of a will, Henry. So Alexandra Daddario has decided to put on the sluttiest shirt that she can find, and um, Tanya Raymond decides to wear a visible red bra with a sheer white tank top over it. Yeah, or white t-shirt formal, possibly, which she which she changes edition. into in the back of the van in front of all the dudes, so they'll check her out, bro. Yeah, it's a formal occasion, so dress accordingly. Yeah, the Dario uh, in particular just looks crazy though. This fucking outfit she put together with this this fucking sheer belly shirt. It's not even cinched like Beal. This thing is just nowhere <laughs> near her fucking like uh, waist. It's like up by her boobs. This shirt. Yeah, she's got it hanging on by a guitar string. I was right? blown away like later in the movie when Scott Eastwood, by the way, Clint Eastwood's son, Scott Eastwood, who's fucking horrible, um, gave her uh, a button down shirt. <laughs> like, cause she's in this little, I remember that. she's I, in this seen. little belly shirt with like her right. boobs hanging out, and it's and it it's, right. it has blood on it by this point, and she's like, here, here's a button down shirt, and she puts it on and buttons one of the buttons i didn't notice that yeah is that right one i didn't remember that. i remember him giving her the shirt i don't remember the affect of its looking after that okay i was phrased well. i was very well um, aware of the shirt um yeah <laughs> scott eastwood what an actor he is so bad i mean it, it's the only uh, he he's got to be the worst actor who's ever been in a Fast and Furious movie, and that's saying something. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say he's the because I was gonna disagree hardcore, but I thought you were gonna say he's the worst child of a famous actor. He's certainly not. Who's the worst child of a famous actor? Worst actor's child, you know. Uh, oh boy, I don't know, but it ain't him. Who is Rumor it? Willis? No, Rishi's great. Okay. I like River Willis. Mm, Who you got? Ooh, oh, ooh, Max you know Landis. What? Oh, okay. That's oh, that's good. not an actor, though. We were saying an actor. One. Who do you I got? I got one. I feel bad. I don't want to. I feel bad. What? I shouldn't say. Who? Uh, well, uh, Kate Hudson. <laughs> Kate Hudson. She's not even close, man. My impulse is to say Chet Hayes, but I love him so much. No, he, he's not really an actor, though. You're copying. But he's out. an actor's son. I, we have to pick an actor. That's what I said. That's why I corrected myself. I said, yeah, an actor's kid who got into acting. Right. Oh, that's, that's, the, choice. Okay. that's Th- the choice. Okay. Then that's I gotta I say, said, it's 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 possible Scott Eastwood's the worst. Ah, uh, there's got to be more. Send us your 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 thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I want an email with every child of an, a famous actor who has decided to become an actor. I, I can't be. think of another. I, I would take Kate Hudson over Scott Eastwood any day of the week. Would too, but yeah. Uh, she, she ain't... Mm, yeah. yeah, you got Gwyneth Paltrow. She's the, son, she's the daughter of some... Yeah, you fine. got a lot. Of course. You know, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. Didn't Robin Williams' his daughter try to act for a while? I don't recall that. Yeah, I think so. All right. All right. Whatever. Don't make fun of the dead. All right. Robin, what? Robin Williams' daughter? <laughs> no, she's alive. Yeah. Nanu, nanu. All right. Where are we? Oh, uh, that's right. Well, they go down there. They run into the town, the guy who's going to give them the lot. It's Richard Real. My MVP. <laughs> you loved Richard Real? I love Richard Real. Anytime that guy's in a movie, he, he's got like the M. Emmett Walsh uh, rule. He's fucking great. Yeah, he's great. He's, uh, of course, my favorite from Office Space, the um, jump great. to conclusions, Matt. 
it's a conclusions map. He's great in the fugitive in a small part. He he's fucking good in anything, man. Always yeah. good, Richard Real. And uh, I I'll tell you what, when he first showed up. I'm thinking like it's 2013. I think Leatherface is supposed to be like an old man in this movie. Right, right. And yeah. uh, and I'm thinking maybe Richard Real is Leatherface. Oh, did you actually think that? Yes. I didn't think that, but okay. But then Leatherface when Leatherface is... showed up, he's like clearly supposed to be like seven fucking feet tall. So I knew it couldn't be Richard Real. <laughs> Richard Real is Leatherface. <laughs> Wait, look out. It's a four foot nine leather face. But listen, the first time you see leather. He's got a small step. He's got a slow gait. But the fir- you first see him, dude, um, after his first kill, because um, they go into town and uh, Daryl, the hitchhiker, stays behind and steals a bunch of shit from the house, which is like a fucking mansion. And. Um, and so when they get back uh, at that night, you remember Dodario just sort of walks into the kitchen and Leatherface is there. Yes. Right, 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 right. And he's just like standing there wearing like a tattered red sweater and like a skin mask. And I'm like, I think that's Richard Real. Wow. That, I never went that direction. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. But then he was running around and being big and shit. So I right. guess not. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so he kills Daryl, and by the way, with a mallet, which I appreciated. Yeah. Oh, it's nice to see. Yeah. Return of the mallet. Um, and he's just like hiding out in the basement, which I kind of love. I love the idea of someone hanging out in the house. You know, I'm a big, yeah, yeah. I'm a Parasite. big when the stranger calls guy. I love Parasite. Of course, uh, my favorite film, Hider in the House. Hider in the house. Don't you ever see that. Hider in the house? I think it's streaming somewhere, Henry. It's amazing. It it's about this family, and um, they're going through a divorce. The father has recently moved out. Uh, Gary Busey, of course, meets the wife. Decides he loves her. He needs to get close to her. He needs to learn what she's into so that he can make her love him. And so he. Moves into their attic, unbeknownst to them. <laughs> God, that does sound awful. He's a hider in the house. Yeah, he is. It's not awful. Is. I'm telling you, it's great. No, I mean like an awful situation. Yeah, yeah. it is rough. Yeah. The mom really is someone good too. Yeah. Yeah. Do you you don't you don't know anything about this movie? I've never heard of it. <laughs> And and I and I feel like in recent years. Oh, it's I've Mimi of- Rogers. It's Mimi Rogers is the mom, and Michael wow. McKeon is the recently divorced husband. Wow. Yeah. Mimi Rogers. All right. It's, what year is that? This is 1989, Henry. Great film. <clears throat> That's Busey, like in his powerhouse years, man. Mm-hmm. Tagline: Jeez. You can't lock him out. He's already in. Nice. That's, good. <laughs> That's a good tagline. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. so that's uh that's free on Amazon Prime, gang. Uh, if Thanks. you're looking for entertainment in the midst of the um, COVID epidemic, if you're looking for entertainment in the next, you know, year. Well, who knows? <laughs> I know <laughs> this could be it. It's not a problem. <laughs> All right. So, um, what do we got? They go into town and they meet some people, including Scott Eastwood, who's a police officer. And also a, a town sheriff who seems like a real asshole. He and, does. Uh, then they go back to the the house where they're like ready to party. Yeah. And um, first, uh, the journal, the, the you know the Buffy journalist gets picked off. He gets brought down to the basement and hilariously hung on a hook and then chopped in half with a with a chainsaw. Yeah, that was uh, that was pleasant, and uh, we hadn't had a hook hanging in in a while. Uh, <laughs> by, by while, I mean like probably you know one movie, but uh, it was nice to have it back. Uh, I missed it, and uh, yeah, he gets bisected. It's so. great. I love to see a pair of jeans just fall off a man. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know I don't know if you did this, but it reminded I was, me but... of Onward. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I was waiting for, you know, it's, I, I figured it was going to happen. It didn't happen. Uh, I figured that we'd get a shot of the legs kind of twitching, you know, still alive. Oh, like but, a daddy uh, long legs. Yeah, they're just dead. He's dead. Yeah. 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 Clean bisection, by the way. Leather so face. clean. He's so but, but very he's, artist. But he's a he's trained good. butcher. True. It's true. He's very good. <laughs> Trained butcher, because you know they do use chainsaws. I I think in the... no leather Leatherface knows now he knows I, I, how to t- take apart an animal. It's true. He could teach Jason and Michael Myers a, a couple of things about blades. I think. Well, those two are fucking rank amateur in the world of blades. Like honestly, I feel like Leatherface <laughs> has more in common with like a. Uh, like a David Chang or an Eric Repair than he does with someone like, uh, you know, Michael yeah. Myers. Could he, could he give a, a seminar, Leatherface, like a, a seminar at the front of the class and you have like Michael Myers and Jason sitting in the audience just like listening intently? I think he to could judge. Punch? I think he could judge a quick fire competition on Top Chef. There you go. Oh, my God. Who's the better dicer? That's right. Yeah, yeah. it would be a butchery competition. and You bring out Leatherface well, to judge. I guess, you know, honestly, Jason's more of like... Uh, you know what the competition uh, should be? This would be what? great, Henry. I, I think right. they should genuinely do this. <laughs> For a Halloween episode of Top Chef, have a quick-fire competition where they have to cut the meat in the shape of a face, and it's who can actually make a leather face skin mask. Oh, I think that that could be done. I'm sure that people would be able to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That would that would be on TLC, right after Bravo. my six hundred life. Yeah, Bravo. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah. All right. So they're partying. Everything's going smoothly. You've got uh, what's the Dario up to? Well. I mean, I was going to jump right to the barn because that's where the fun begins. Yeah, but I was trying to remember, like, where Daddario is during all that. Because, yeah, it, what it is is um, Tr- Tanya Raymond goes up to Trey Songs and he's like, she's like, I have to show you something gross in the barn. I think it's like a right. fucking animal or a bug or something. Oh, uh, yeah, I didn't, though. And Did she, you think that? No, of course not. I knew no, she was trying no, to fuck right. him. Uh, right, so right. He, she, um, she says it's under that pot. And he opens up the pot, and it's like a bottle of champagne. And uh, zero resistance this time. <laughs> well, he's zero. He's resistant at first, but then don't you remember he's he's saying like I can't, I can't, and then he turns around. She's already like taking her clothes off. Yeah, it's a point of no return for him. Yeah, it's over. And he's over. he's just like, you know, it's hard once that dick starts moving. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Once the blood is rushing there, yeah. you got to oh, talk Daniel. to your brain. Right, right. Trey Songs is not uh, talking to his brain. No. He's, uh, he's all in. Uh, boy, and just side note, he's a shitty boyfriend. She's a shitty friend. Uh, this girl is really she's a she's a really bad friend she should not be it's such a fucked up move to like knowingly go after your friend's person like yeah it's almost i think forgivable for like a drunken night Mm, not really but okay Mm. i'm i think friend forgivable i think i think in that situation like you're all drunk and a friend and a significant other are fucking, I think the, it's up to the significant other to say no. I think a friend can come back from that. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking like resurgency. Who yeah. can be, who, who can make it back from that abyss yeah. of, of gravity? Imagine yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Imagine this, Henry. Oh, God, here we go. You fuck. Right. It would definitely be me. It wouldn't be you. I fuck one of your exes. <laughs> You're too good a friend. Glad you at li- I'm glad you at least got that part right. <laughs> okay. Imagine this. And uh-huh. then you would dump the girl immediately, right? Yeah. Yeah, because she cheated. She fucked one of your friends. That's a fucked up That's thing right. to do. And then right. you would probably 
hate me. And you'd end the podcast. I know you would do that. Right. And you wouldn't talk to me for like a while. But I bet you, Henry, if I reached out to you like a year later, maybe even less, we could be friends again. I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm, I'm, you know me. I'm a little puritanical with that stuff. What if, know. hear me out, hear me out. If, <laughs> if they made it through the week, this weekend uh, in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and okay. Tanya Raymond um, got help, okay? Like she showed up at Alexandra Daddario's door six months later, said, I'm six months sober, I have a sponsor. <laughs> I'm doing I'm making amends um and I I I had sex with Trey Songs twice. I'm so sorry. Um but here I am and uh, I'm ready to come back and be your friend whenever you'll have me. Mhm. So this You don't presume- think that Dario would <laughs> This would presume that Dario no, she doesn't ever she doesn't ever find out about it, does she? In this movie, you're no, right. No, she never she does. She never finds out. Yeah. Well, if you, I mean, in that scenario, in this movie, I guess that's uh, uh, possible. I, I don't know the psyche of, uh, you know, Mrs. Leatherface. I, I couldn't do it with me. I'm sober at this point. I don't think I would fuck a friend's lady. But yeah. But you think, like, back when oh, I was drinking, when if mm-hmm. I was, like, blackout drunk and I fucked one of your exes, Mm-hmm. And then, like, came back to you months later, like, sober and, like, ready to be a good friend to you. You wouldn't take me back? I don't know, man. There are some things. I'm sorry. You think that's, an, that's just unforgivable? You look crestfallen. I, I am. I, I... <laughs> am I ruining some plans? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think I think it shows a lack of loyalty to you, Henry. I, I, I... See, from you, yes, from yeah, you. from you. Yeah. From you. Yeah, I agree. From you. From me? From this you. is a fucking hypothetical. <laughs> you commit that act, how, how would I possibly look I'm, you in the eye Okay, again? okay, say I relapse, okay? <laughs> You're I, I relapse, I only drink for one night, and I went and I fucked somebody that you dated, you know, Ten years ago or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then the next day, I only drink for that one night, and then I'm back on the horse. I'm sober. I go back. I go away to rehab. And then I come back 30 months later. I I can't believe I fucking did that, and I apologize to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. I'm still Uh, dead to you. Yeah. No, 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 no. I, I got yeah. You're burdening my heart with this hypothetical <laughs> bullshit situation. Uh, you know, uh, we'd we, we'd we'd work it out. We'd talk. We'd work it out. That's we'd what talk. I'm saying. But I bet you, you'd never talk to that girl again. No, I probably wouldn't. Thank you. Uh, but that's, that's all I'm trying to say. Oh well, that, that but that's a different. I mean, that's a relationship. You know, at, that I would be have been currently in is also your point. That's also your point. I guess that's true, yeah. Yeah, it's a huge fucking part of it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, whatever. I'd forgive We're, you, Henry. I know you would, because, you know, we have different uh, moral trajectories, I guess. I don't know what to... I think I'm a realist, Henry. You're a <laughs> fucking fantasist. <laughs> ah, I, I have willpower. I have, I have a great deal of willpower. You have a dumb deal of willpower. <laughs> I bet you if we looked at the You're amount of dumb. if we looked at the amount of times in our lives that we could have fucked versus the amount of times that we fucked. Mm. I bet that it's a clo- the numbers are closer for me. I bet you've turned it down a lot when it was an opportunity. I'd have to think about that. I'd have to think <laughs> about that. And you just went with it. I think I, it, it, it's just like once I have a boner, <laughs> I just do it. Yeah, I, I think we've established uh, that tr- truth, folks, if anything else. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, Henry. Welcome um, to our show. Uh, <laughs> this is a, it's like a self-help program. It's turned into like, I, I feel, it sounds like we're like on NPR. It's like fresh air. Friends loyalty. 
Oh, with yeah. Terry Gross. It's like Savage Love. Now listen, everyone. <laughs> Hi, I'm Michelle Norris. <laughs> Can yeah. we get Steve Harvey on to give his relationship advice? <laughs> well, you got to act like a lady, but think like a man. Hey, Is we could what? cover that. Remember, they made those movies, and there was a sequel. Oh. There was Think Like a Man 2, T-O-O. Right, 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 right. Also, Think Like a Man also. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Can we get back to it? So, uh, Leather... I'd like to. Jesus. Leather's yeah. chasing Daddario. He chases her to the... Um, there's like a little cemetery, like one of those family cemeteries. And uh, she hides out in there at one point in her grandmother's coffin like a weirdo. And uh, Yeah. That was strange. And that doesn't Nikki kind of save her for a second by yelling at him? Well, they hear her, they hear like the vroom vroom both- of the of the chainsaw. So Trey Songs okay. and Tanya Raymond go outside and try to det- distract the guy, which Post- they do. <laughs> and then he yeah. fucking chases them into the barn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's sort of like a a dog, like with a car. Like he doesn't focus. He has trouble focusing. Leatherface. He 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 doesn't focus on the one kill. Because I think what he's looking for is food. He's hunting, and he's and so he's right down in the coffin. He's got it right there. I know he you is stupid. Him? She, I like, know what? she's like leaning into one side of the coffin. I'm like, move the fucking chainsaw centimeter. You got her. I mean, Michael Myers has focus like he is after you and he will just stay on you. You know, Leatherface is kind of like, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just anywhere, just like squirrel. And he's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, he, he's pretty easy to distract. You yeah, know? I guess you're right, man. You You can sort of manipulate Leatherface. Also, I, you anytime anyone pretends to be like Leatherface's girlfriend or or like best friend or something, like he is down to like play that game with you. You're okay for a few seconds. I feel like I think I we've discovered what needs to happen. A movie where Leatherface teaches Michael Myers and Jason the art of butchery and Jason and Michael Myers teach him the art of focused murder. Well, it's very possible that Leather has some form of ADD. I mean, yep. there's a lot of incest in that family, and that's... I mean, can ADD be transferred that way? Genetically? You mean? Genetically, yeah. I would imagine that it can. Yeah, yeah so yeah. there you go. And he's probably been physically abused and, you know... I don't think so. Kicked in. A few I feel times. like he's been raised well by this grandmother, Lily Taylor. Very well. It's very well. It's very well. Yeah. Do you think Lily Taylor's like fucking this kid? We're not there yet. That's the next movie. <laughs> okay. Uh, so anyway. I, and if they were, I would I would be friends with him, but never speak to Lily Taylor again. Mm. <laughs> Great one. <laughs> so Leatherface chases uh, Daddario then to um, a uh, carnival. And she jumps onto the side of a... She climbs a Ferris wheel, which is pretty good. Yeah, that was a good sequence. That was probably probably the best sequence of the movie because you're in public, and I really didn't know... I couldn't know. believe we were at a Ferris wheel. It was such a relief. Right. Like, what an interesting location. It was an interesting location. You didn't know if he was going to be taken as a serious threat or one of the sort of clown figures because I believe right before he makes his appearance, there's isn't there like a... A guy in a costume also with some sort yeah, of Yeah, I think everyone thinks he's a weirdo at first, but then, and like, I, he's swinging his fucking chainsaw at her. Right. That was really good because it takes you out of the environment you've been clo- you've been cloistered in uh, in in seven of these movies, uh, and puts and you throw- into the world. Yeah, it like there are some so fucking extras for once in this yeah, movie. Yeah, throws you some variables. You're like, oh, what's the rest of the uh, you know world going to think of the situation that's going on right now, and how are people going to react? And I liked the shot of her like hanging on the Ferris wheel. You know, it's going to come around the other side, and he's just kind of staring up at her, yeah, like waiting for it. It's good. That's a good sequence. It yeah. is good. Then he throws that chainsaw we talked about. Meanwhile, we've got one cop shows up at like the, uh, you know, the chainsaw family home, and he's like, uh, 
It's sort of like the scene in the first Scream where David Arquette enters the house with like his gun. Okay. The All right. first Scream. The All first right. Scream. Yeah, where there's always they're always uh, underarmed, underprepared. Yeah. We, yeah. We, we, it's a lot. No. So he gets in there, and I loved this. He opens up like a, a coffin or whatever, and Tanya Raymond is in there, but he's so spooked that he sees a person that he just shoots her. That was good. That was good. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, that's yeah. how she dies. Yeah. That, that, that. Oh, by the way, no, I wasn't wrong then. That, that This is the movie with actually two black characters. That it's guy's the not black. Yeah, the sh- no, that's the white cop taking orders from the sh- shitty mayor, and the black sheriff keeps telling him, "Don't." Oh, go you're in right. There. It's fucking. It's Tom yeah. Barry. You know. Yeah. He, so he's. We've right. come across him in Fast and Furious as well. He was yeah. the FBI agent uh, ordering yeah, around so, uh, Paul Walker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So th- this is that movie. And, he he and also yeah. played Michael Jordan's dad in Space Jam. <laughs> well, I'm looking at him now. Hey, we came across him again. He was that guy. Remember Pops in Major League Three, Back to the Minors? Oh, oh, I sure do. Yeah, he's that the guy. Old, to this day, the only movie we've ever covered on this show that I had to watch on a computer. Oh, that's right. As opposed to every movie for me. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, so that guy, right, he's the sheriff. Um, so they bring the Dario in. She sort of makes friends with Scott Eastwood because he's handsome. Uh, but then she gets a look at, like, the her family's file or whatever, and it's all about the big massacre at the house years ago, and she sort of starts to figure out her own lineage. Yep. And then she gets into a car with Scott Eastwood, and he's going to take her somewhere. But then, oops, he's a bad guy, and he's part of the Chainsaw family. No, he's not part of the Chainsaw oh, family. Oh, you're right, because we're supposed to like the Chainsaw family in these movies. Right. right, so it's like this group of like original townspeople that have right. like kept this secret all these years that and they massacred this family. That's right. his son. Yeah, yeah, Because he, right. he goes, all right, dad. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, his dad is, like, the the racist sheriff or whatever. Not sheriff, but, um, like, deputy or whatever. I don't even know if he's racist. I actually think he's just a fucking... He, I don't you know. know. We're supposed to take him as, like, a fucking redneck. That's the problem with the, with this film is, like, it's, like, he's a hateful, spiteful motherfucker, but it's, like, who's he being hateful and spiteful for to? It's, like, uh, this group of cannibalistic psychopaths from the first movie so it's like anytime you just rewind your brain to that you're just kind of like okay okay. i mean he is uh he is trying to kill that that family that's like the most horrifying family on earth (laughs) yeah yeah but but just leave that family alone they're all right people (laughs) well you know what they could have done you know what take what what does make him bad is that he wants to eradicate forever that bloodline. So he is unfairly targeting this poor girl. She's Correct. Done right, nothing. right. She, she, she's she's adopted. Nothing. Like, she doesn't really... She learned about her bloodline today. In a fucking file room. So, I mean, there's no reason That's to kill sad. her. The way this movie turns out, uh, he could have probably, probably killed her. You know? Probably would have done a good, uh, good, done good will to the world there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, good point. Yeah, it's during this part she's wearing the button-down shirt. So, you know, you'd expect her to put it on over the existing shirt, but no. She takes off that shirt. She is not wearing a bra. And now she's just wearing a button-down shirt with one button over nothing. And we're supposed to take this character seriously, but we're getting ample under boob. And... I, uh, I, I, you're <laughs> right about the under under boob. I didn't notice that, uh, or I mean, I did notice that. What I mean is, I didn't pay attention to such the wardrobe. Later really, on, she gets tied, really but later it. on, she gets tied up, and the one button comes loose. Do you remember? And the, the, but it's like it looks like the shirt is probably taped to her boobs. Because, yes, yeah, because it's, it's like on her, <laughs> but it shouldn't be on her. It's draping point. upon her perfectly. Yeah, right. Right, right, right. Yeah, um, yeah. But meanwhile, this is when we cut to Leatherface, uh, who is now sewing the Leatherfaces to his face. Right, that's right. Or it, no, sewing them together. I, I mean, didn't I care know. for it. it. He no, I don't like any of that stuff. I don't need the uh, seamstressing. 
I don't need to see the seamstressing stuff. That's too gross for me too. Uh, I mean, I could take even the meat grinder sequence when Mayor Burt gets thrown into the meat grinder. I That's loved fine. that. What there That's was too much, fine. too much CG. I will say. Oh, in the meat grinder. Yeah. Thing? It, she's like hanging on by the hands and and he cuts the hands off and he falls into the meat grinder. It's great, but it, it it's too much CG. I it's did cool. like the uh sheriff who's looking down over it and who lets him die. And you know, you kind of wonder what he's gonna do because it's all that's left is Leatherface and his cousin, uh Daddario. Mm-hmm. And he just kind of looks down and he's like, clean this shit up. Yeah. <laughs> and walks away, which is his way of saying, just do your thing. Just yeah, don't yeah, everything's fine. Just We're just not going to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Leatherface and Daddario by this point are like fucking buds. They have bonded as cousins, and they are going to now live together in this house. Um, uh, also, when she finally gets loose, she grabs the chainsaw and passes it to him. <laughs> do you remember that? Yeah. And oh, she yeah. goes, do yeah. your thing, cuz. Yeah, that was that actually kind of made me cringe. A I bit, loved it. I have to admit. Yeah, I, it's, it should be a good line, but I kind of went, oh, God. Yeah. Um, she tries to see his face at the end when they're going to. She tries to take his mask yeah, off. Grabs he's not her. into it. That, it's not it's not part of his. his but his he's kid. letting her feed him and stuff. And I, we should mention a very crucial thing that we did not mention because it's kind of the whole reason. Is that, it the letter? Yeah, I mean, she doesn't read the letter. I couldn't Richard believe Reel, it. We, Richard Reel says like 17 times, make sure you read the letter. Read the letter. <laughs> and then uh, she finally reads it at the end of the movie, and we hear it in voiceover, and it's like, your cousin Leatherface lives in the basement. Don't, <laughs> you, you know, make sure you feed him and, uh, you know, and and tell him you're his cousin so he doesn't murder you. And, and like, if she just read this fucking letter at the beginning of the movie, not, her friends would still be alive. Everything would be fine. She'd yeah. still be friends with Tanya Raymond. She would have broken up with Trey Songs because that's how things work. Oh, um, she would have not been friends with her, <laughs> up with him, and never speak to them again. That's life, you know, reap, you sow, reap what you sow. Oh, and, uh, my God. Get some new friends, and, uh, you know, there you go. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. Uh, and, I, that, and that's the end of the movie. Well... Okay, the stinger. So, Did you see the stinger? No, I, I, I quit. You know, I thought I we haven't had a lot of those. If it was any. good. So, I read about it. I felt yeah. like it was 2013. We're in a post Avengers world. Maybe there's a stinger. So tell me what it. I mean, I can read it, but tell me what it looked like. Her tell parents, me her like adopted parents from the beginning of the movie, they like show up at the door down in Newt. And okay. there, you see them like talking outside the door, like, "Oh my God, we're gonna make so much fucking money!" Because <laughs> they want a piece of this inheritance, you know. Sure. Huh. And then um, Daddario comes to the door, and uh, she sees them. And then uh, I forget what happens. Maybe she she like closes the door for a second, or she walks out of frame. And then all of a sudden, like Leatherface shows up in the door frame, and that's how the movie okay. ends. So he dispatches. Yeah, them she quick. just like six Leatherface on her fucking family. That's good. Yeah. All right, yeah, yeah, poetic justice for the, for the white trash. I'm happy with and that. And that's the end of the movie. I would have loved to see another Le- Texas Chainsaw movie with this Daddario Leatherface team up. It, it was it was an original thing we hadn't seen yet, and uh, it gave a little bit of humanity to uh, Lathar Face and. Uh, yeah, I didn't mind. It was for, certainly the only movie si- of any of them that has convinced me that Leatherface works as like the main killer of a movie. But even with that, you needed Dario to bond with him so that like he had any personality. Yeah, you're right, but you are right on your first point though. He he is actually pretty he is independently the 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 horror focus of of the movie so it is kind of the first time and the last great yeah. stuff henry what do you give this movie two stars two stars i'm going to give this a solid 3 okay um i by the way bill mosley was the that like sheriff guy yeah and right. we, he was he's the guy who played chop top in uh, Texas, yeah, I, I knew that. Yeah, I knew that. They they had they had him 
kind of they wanted him where he played chop top and, and who was he in this now not the sheriff the sheriff's the black guy or the the other guy then like uh the the, the mayor guy bert no not bert the other guy <laughs> I don't there's know. So many, he's there's around. So many white people in he's here. He's around in this movie. So is Marilyn okay. Burns, by the way. Um, well, we we did see her. Yeah. She she a full on the voiceover. They show this old white haired lady sitting there, and yeah. So, who's your? You said your MVP is Richard Real. Yes. You know, I don't think she's like an incredible. I don't think she's great or anything. But I thought Alexandra Daddario carried this fucking movie. You talked about her shirt enough. I think you owe it to her to give her an MVP. <laughs> You're right. Okay, I'll give her my MVP. And my LVP is Kenny. The uh, the actor's name is Karam Maliki Sanchez. Okay. Not a name I thought he would have. No. I thought his name. I thought his name would be like Dylan Barrett. He just looks like a white guy to me. Oh my god! Yeah, he's bad. Um, I thought Trey Songs was pretty bad. I'm gonna go with him. He was. That's totally fair. Um, and there is a uh. Four count. Let's hear it. Oh. Make sure you're washing those hands out there, gang. <laughs> nice. What were the placement on that? <laughs> Superman theme made you think about sanitization. I'm being a hero. <laughs> Oh, that's true. It's true. Buy all the Purell and don't give it to anyone else. That's the way to be. It's the American way. That's truth, justice, and the American way. Mm. <laughs> Scott, don't call me Clint Eastwood, is Lieutenant GQ Edwards in Suicide Squad. Sure. Right? Oh, so I, he might have. I, I think him. I kind of do remember him in Suicide Squad. He must be pretty minor because the character's name isn't even like a Suicide Squad character. Yeah, it's not like Mr. Nobody or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Pan. Hugh Edwards. Jesus Christ. All right, what else do we have? Sean Sipos. Sean Sipos, who played Daryl, the, the guy who rocked. Yeah. yeah. He uh, was in. Uh, he played Adam Strange on Krypton. Wow, they're using Adam Strange on that show, huh? And He's like a laser gun space guy. <laughs> great show, sounds like. Uh, and he was in one of your favorite shows. Uh, he played the role of. This is true. The role was called Chloe's Boy Thing in Smallville. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, you do not want to be Chloe's boy thing. That <laughs> is that is rough stuff. Oh, she. Oh, OK. Now, uh, you familiar with the uh, Nexium cult, of course. Nexium, the. Uh, the heartburn the medication or the acid <laughs> reflux medication. I was trying to, yeah. No, no. Um, it, The actress who played Chloe on that show. um. Uh, Allison Mack. Uh, it turned out that she was um, the second in command of a sex cult that was uh, branding all of its members and forcing them to starve and be anorexic so that they can fuck the leader of the sex cult. This is in real life. Yes. I. We. This has come up. Of like, course it has. I'm obsessed with it. I, <laughs> but it's been a long, long time. So she must have come up or somebody else involved with it. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> Allison Mack, she's in prison now, I believe. And, uh, That's and, good. and that I can't wait. Like whatever comes out, the documentary, the, the film based on ah. the Nexium sex call. Ah. I cannot wait. My Lord. It's All my right. most anticipated film now that we have two fire festival documentaries. Um, <laughs> Henry, I'm not done. Oh, fine. Go ahead. Karam Maliki Sanchez, mm -hmm. Canadian actor. My LVP, Kenny. Uh, he was in Punisher Warzone, playing a character named Ink. Ink. That sounds familiar. I think that's a Punisher character. Go ahead. All right. And lastly is Tom Barry. That's right, who played Pops Morgan, and he was <laughs> Sheriff Hooper and this. Um Tom Barry was an uncredited voice actor in The Incredible Hulk. How about that? There should never be a, a Sheriff Hooper. 
That sounds wrong. Why? Well, because it's Sheriff Brody. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you got Hooper in that movie. So Yeah, you, you just... can't. I feel like you can't have a Sheriff Hooper or a Sheriff... Um, uh... Nottingham. No, no. Who's the other character in Jaws? Wyatt Earp. Oh, uh, Brody, Hoopa, and Quint. Quint, of course. God. And, and the mayor, of course. Who's the mayor? Larry Vaughn. <laughs> the... Mayor, mayor Vaughn, of course. This is... This COVID thing, it's like Trump is Larry Vaughn. He is, right of now. course. You're not the first person to make that reference. Oh, I I didn't know I've, people. Yeah, that's a thing. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, keep the beaches open. Keep the beaches open. We've got we've got we've got mouths to feed. We've got businesses to run. That's a pretty good impression. We don't Thank need you. to be listening to the Democrats, the no, the do nothing Democrats about the Wuhan virus. I like to refer to it as Wuhan just to remind you that it came from China. Uh, Dan, I got I got to tell you something. I I got I got I got to pass a compliment right now, my friend. Uh you know how I like your impressions. <laughs> you, yeah. You 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 don't do that many, but the ones that you do are are very good. Trump is one of those impressions that I am just have not really been satisfied with with anyone's. Uh I, I like your impression. Thank you, Henry. It's a good one. Like you even got the whole uh, I like to refer to and, you know, and, and all that hyperbole shit and all that. That's that's very good. Yeah. You got you got his the, the timbre of his voice. You you got Listen, it. Really I, didn't, well. I didn't watch fucking 16 seasons of The Apprentice for nothing. That, if if that's only what you got out of it, that's fine enough for me because I've literally been waiting five years for a good impression of him and I haven't I haven't seen it. So yeah. okay, great. Yeah, Anthony um, Atamanuik does a good one. I'd have to. I don't know who that. Who, he like he? did a he did like a fake talk show on Comedy Central for a while where he was playing Trump. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah he does a good I'm, one. Maybe back in the day before he was. Uh, uh, the Fuhrer. Yeah, Daryl Hammond uh, does an Hammond, okay, right, like, right, apprentice Trump, but exactly President Trump is different. Yeah, Very, very different. Very, very different. Couldn't possibly be more different. Very, very different. Very, the, the most, most different, different you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Leatherface comes <clears throat> to us four years later, and uh, it, I'll tell you, this is a movie that they released, and it came out. People saw it. Not yeah. me. It was not on my radar. You know, I couldn't believe when I looked up Texas Chainsaw 3D that it made $47 million. <laughs> like, did that? I, I, I thought it was direct-to-video. I mean, I don't remember it coming out. I mean... When and, was that I, in theaters? I, 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 it, it, I did not pay attention to that. Uh, I had just moved uh, out of New York at that point. I was I was quite going to the movies a lot, and I don't remember seeing anything about that fucking thing. No. Ever. And I don't remember seeing anything about this one either. When, when do I. Honestly, like, when we started doing the franchise and we knew Texas Chainsaw would be good for the show, when I looked up that franchise and saw there were two additional movies, I could not believe my eyes. You wouldn't have even seen Leatherface. We, we're, we're longer running than 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 leatherface but we have a longer running than the... <laughs> <laughs> oh that's a great point yeah we started before this movie came out that is, that is a great point <laughs> it was one of one of my most perceptive observations great stuff thank you all right uh, so we have a rare two directors one writer you don't no, see that no, too often huh no. Oh no, I and mean, we needed it. I get it. Yeah. Oh baby, yeah, you need two guys to run this ship. You got <laughs> Julian Mori and Alexandra Bustillo. They're a pair. Yeah, they're they... a, pair, a pair of Francos. Yeah, do you know what they've directed other than this? Just looking now. Yeah, yeah nothing. It's a bunch of shutter bullshit. <laughs> Wow, you're right. ABCs of Death 2? I'm sorry, I didn't know about the first one. Oh, boy, you're right. I, You know, it's funny when you see stuff like that because now that we always see, you know, listed on Netflix and Amazon and Tubi even, mm. there's so many shit horror movies out there, and when I don't know one at all, I'm still surprised. I'm it's still like, 
It's always, I'll tell you what they are. They always have one word titles. Like I see they directed one uh, called Livid. Livid. And it's, it's always like that. It's sort of like grimy or right. like bubbling. Or- oh, it's a, <laughs> it, Livid is a follow-up to their first film, Inside. Yep, there, the, another word. <laughs> you, you can attach any meaning to scales, right? That's probably about a giant crocodile. Scales got to be one. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, they just make these movies over and over again. A lot of times you, it's like um, the cover is like a pattern, some sort of a, a maze cut into somebody's skin. Oh, yeah. yeah you absolutely. see that a lot. Uh, a lot of times it's just like a spooky house and a lot of times it's a spooky kid. A spooky kid, you can't. Those are the kinds that of horror movies. Every, that shit's literally every other. Sometimes choice. a spooky tree, if you're lucky, if you, or a monster, you see. Right. I'm looking at their movies. They've got Bloody Girl. That's one you see a lot. They've got looks like Spooky Old Lady. Interesting. That's that's a, that's a take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see here. What's this one? Among the Living. Screaming Girl with a Baby. <laughs> Screaming girl with a baby. You see that one? Yeah, yeah, that's on Among the Living. Among the Living. Okay, yeah. Well, so, au lieu de vivant. Mm-hmm. Oh, here they have a new film coming out this year. The Deep House. <laughs> Looks like the... it's a spooky house underwater. <laughs> How about that? That's Any house underwater. I mean, that's you know, boy. Yeah, yeah. they're they're going for it. So there are new directors. Um, they do not care about font. I'll tell you that much. They'll they'll just use whatever the um, the standard default I was font right. is. Font. I was all right with the font. Look to me like Times New Roman twelve. <laughs> I, I was all right with Arial Black. <laughs> it's the default font on their uh, on their typeset for yeah. their camera on the on Final Cut. And ah. uh, we have new writer Seth M. Sherwood. I wonder if he's uh, um, related to that guy who created Gilligan's Island. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? No, I don't. But I'm sure that they put the he put the M in there so he wouldn't confuse him with the other famous Seth Sherwood. Yeah, right. Seth Sherwood looks like he uh, has written some stuff. Looks like there's a spooky kid movie. There's a spooky devil movie. <laughs> oh. oh, actually, I've heard of that spooky devil movie, Hellfest. Some people liked that. It was like a, Hellfest? yeah, it was amusement park themed. Sounds great. Yeah, great stuff. So uh, he's got an upcoming movie too, Boyfriend. <laughs> Looks like a spooky imaginary friend movie. <laughs> All right, so that's what they're doing, uh, and we're making this. Uh, what? I was just going to say where they filmed it, but go ahead. Oh, we've got a... Uh, oh, Bulgaria, they filmed it. Yeah, it's a good setting. I was for... going to go there with my girlfriend this year before we broke up. Bulgaria, yeah. huh? Yeah. We were going to go to a wedding, but, you know, I guess now I'll just uh, stay home. Well, you probably wouldn't have been going anyway if it makes you feel any better. Oh, that's a great point. You're right. That wedding's probably not happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, apparently, Lucenhop. Uh, the who directed the last one had the opportunity to pitch a sequel, and he he came in with with ideas, and they fucking turned him down. They went to Boy, this that's... Seth Sherwood fella. Yeah, that was mean. Yeah, it seems like a dick move. I uh, mean, he made them two million dollars. Yeah, he, they he did. I know, but it's just it's still a, they're considering that sort of the way we're talking about it. I mean, but at this point, it's becoming like fucking Terminator. We're re, we're I rebooting guess. it every time. Like that movie didn't so do that badly. Happy. Yeah, so we're just happy if it makes twenty million. We're like, hey, it did all right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So God this, is- I don't have a uh, budget information for this movie, but the last one cost twenty million dollars. I mean, this one had to cost at least ten, and the box office here I have listed as nine hundred fifty-eight thousand six hundred fifty dollars. Oh my! Yeah, that's uh, what that can't be accurate. That's what it I'm says. Looking at the same thing, but how how can that only have made nine hundred? I mean, it might not include like streaming VOD figures or whatever, because it was released day and date. I think. And that might only encompass like the theatrical gross. Uh, 
But wow, I mean, I I will admit, like we already admitted, I I don't remember this coming out, but it's hard for me to buy that in 2017 around Halloween, a movie called Leatherface. Yeah, this doesn't make anything. I mean, my God. And he's got two stars in it. Speaking of two stars, I looked this one up on fucking Letterboxd and people are loving it. Really? Yeah. You know. I think a case can be made for 3D, and I think a case can be made for, for parts of this. I think this movie's trash. Um, I don't. We I open, don't. it's Texas, 1955. Uh, you've got, uh, it's someone's birthday. There's a cake on the table. There's some wild kids running around. They start yeah. grabbing at the cake with their hands and, like, eating pieces it's disgusting. It's all very gross. It's grosser than the... anything that happened in the last movie. <laughs> I was just going to say, that was definitely one of the grosser moments in the uh, franchise uh, where just hand-grabbing cake. Yeah. yeah. So who do you have uh, driving at the beginning of this movie? There's uh... I had to figure that out later. Yeah. That, so you got Sally Hardesty's dad. Twenty year, Probably she's not born yet. So her dad is driving a pickup truck. We don't know that. Uh, <laughs> but And then the passenger is the daughter of Stephen Dorff's character. Mm. She's lured into a barn by a pig-faced child. Uh, I thought it was a cow he's wearing on his head. So did I, but I... You're absolutely right. It was a cow. <laughs> yeah, he's wearing a cow's head. And here's the it's thing. Got, it's got a mark in the center from being uh, slaughtered by the uh, those. The those bolt things. thing, yeah. Yeah, the bolt gun. Right. The kid is, like, freaking out in the middle of the road. Like, I, I, I don't know. Like, he's trying to, like, get the, any car's attention to, like, bring them into the woods. Like, something's going right. on. Right. Like, follow right. me. But he's wearing a cow's head. Like, first of all, if if he was trying to lure people, wouldn't it be easier to do if he just looked like a kid? That's probably true. That's so probably I don't know true. what this fucking plan they cooked up is. Hey, well, put this cow head on. You're not the brightest fan. But you know what? This fucking idiot girl gets out of the car and is like, hey, freak. I... <laughs> Take me to your parents or whatever. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all fair points. Um, I, I can't remember. Does the kid, he speaks, right? He does say, like, come help me or something. Does he actually speak English? Does he say, help no, me? No, he's just like, follow me. Like, he's doing a hand motion. Like, right. come on, over here. This way. All right, and she, she willingly goes into the open field of Bulgarian wheat yeah, fields. Yeah, promptly gets murdered. Yeah, she, in a, a very strange murder, she they pull a trap door from under her. She falls on what is completely in dis- – you can't even un- understand what she falls on. I don't know what it is. I it did looks like, like the- that there was a trap door, though. Sure, sure. <laughs> under the hay. Uh, under the hay, the making of Leatherface. Ooh. Uh, she falls onto this, like, metal just bunch of shit. And then they they drop a big metal. It just seems like they're just killing to kill. I guess to well, eat. they're killing to eat. Yeah, right. right. Um, but Stephen Dorff is none too happy, Henry. No, he's not. Because ten. No, not. No, well, not first we take later. we take the kid to the orphanage. Well, Stephen Dorff shows up and looking for his daughter, and they tell him you don't want to go in there. You know, your daughter's in the middle of some metal frequencies uh and and he won't go in so then he says he's gonna get the family but he can't because for some ridiculous reason they don't have any evidence but i guess they say that the sawyers always show up when there's a dead body again not a smart family don't be at the crime yeah 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 that's the thing it's 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 like anytime something fucking goes wrong in this town one of you sawyers is around you're just like Ain't ain't us. Ain't no evidence pointing us. That sounds awful circumstantial to me, Sheriff. <laughs> A rude toot toot. I'm gonna go back home. A shooby shop 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 shooby out Yeah. And I can vote. Whoop. Uh. <laughs> 
It's <laughs> a deep cut, huh? Nice. Okay. Wow. I'm a redneck piece of shit, and I can vote. <laughs> <laughs> David hey, Cross. at least they're getting their three hundred dollars. Yeah. All right. Um, so the door says, "Well, fuck you. I'm going to take your la- your youngest kid." Right. Okay. So it's ten years later. We meet this new character, Lizzie. Right. Everyone's Nurse. everyone's like, "Hey, Elizabeth, you can call me Lizzie." No. Like, everyone's declining to call her Lizzie in this fucking movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Ex- she's okay. She's like a, you know. No, she's good. She's an actual actress. This girl can no, actually. No, no, you can, you can yeah. definitely tell she's an actress, and I think she's British doing an American accent, and it doesn't really? slip. I, didn't I, I believe. I think a lot of the characters in this, the like the actors in this movie are British. Well, Jackson is, and I I didn't know that till after the movie. I didn't either, and he he's kind of hamming it up with that southern accent, but it it works all right. Work for me, man. I I didn't think the actors. In oh, this she's movie... not British. The girl, she's just an actress. Canada. Yeah. She's Canadian. There you go. Yeah, she's all right. You're, yeah, Vanessa Grass is her name, Vanessa... and Sam Strike is Jackson. So it's Lizzie's first day working at this um. School, it, it, it's what is it like? Uh, school for gifted youngsters. <laughs> Boy, that's a really generous term. Uh, I, I just thought it's, it was, it's a it, mental it, institution, it, it, yeah, it's an asylum from like hell. Yeah, at 1965, but it's for um, younger people. And it, but, right, so, so it's, like a it's, it's her first day. She's been there for 30 seconds, and she meets Jackson, who's like this handsome kid with a southern accent, who has been in this mental institution his entire life, and already she's like, mm, I think I want to fuck him. <laughs> he introduces his friend, uh, 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 Bud. That's why she wants to fuck him, because he's nice to this fat kid. Right, right, right. Bud. She, he shows charity to Bud. All right, I want to say it right now. The and, whole yeah. thing with this whole movie, their one idea is the whole movie you're supposed because it's a prequel you're meant to think that this fat bud kid who doesn't speak and is sort of like has uh, you know anger issues and freaks out a few times he you, you, the whole movie you're watching it thinking he's leatherface and yeah. then it turns out it's not it's the handsome southern kid with a british actor we were talking about jackson worked for me worked for me it's a good twist um it's of course um ripped off from uh that Wolverine comic origin where the whole thing you're supposed to think that he's the 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 grimy, you know, angry kid named Dog, and then it turns out that he's the rich British kid with the rich parents. That's in a comic? Yeah, that's the Wolverine origin comic where like you find yeah. out what where he came from. Interesting. And I genuinely think like that idea was transferred to this movie. Really? Yes. I, I mean, I just thought it was. It's the kind I mean, it of. It could have been come up with independently before. or whatever. I know it's been done before, but it's right. just done structurally exactly that to the point where, like, finally the British kid pops his claws in the comic and you're like, oh my God, that's Wolverine. Right. And in this movie, it's like um, he gets like scarred or whatever and he starts putting a mask on his he starts well, cutting up I, a mask and it's like oh my god I still didn't figure i mean because you know he shoot well we'll get there <laughs> like <laughs> way well, in nothing future, happens but... in this movie so we can get there pretty fast i i, I mean doctor overseeing the whole institution uh and uh in in one of the best scenes in the movie because i and i even had this thought when it was happening God, I love me a prison break in a movie. They are fun. It's good. Chaotic, man. insane asylum breaks. I mean, they are good. I it mean, reminded me of like a really low budge version of the beginning of Ghost Protocol. Really, <laughs> <laughs> really low budget. What a comparison. Yeah. That's one where it's like got Simon Pegg like looking at. He's like dressed as a guard or some shit. Yeah. Like. Oh, doors left and right and they're okay. playing some stupid boomer song in that scene too okay of course or sinatra um, or something um yeah yeah no no uh dean martin dean martin right yeah uh, and lucky can one guy get Ugh. um 
Yeah, but oh, by the way, before we even get to the printing break, we've been introduced already to Lily Taylor, who, as usual, is fucking fantastic. She's great. Man. She's my MVP. Oh, I don't know what to make of her in the movie. You, rather, like the royal you. We don't know what, you know, I, you know, she's obviously well, she's playing the role you know, like a real person, which is what real actors do. And, right. and so she's playing her like basically uh, the, the sense I got was it's like she's an actor who's like trying to figure out her character's motivation. And her motivation in this movie is she just wants her son back. That's it. Yeah. That's and so you find yourself sympathizing with her a little bit um, because little bit. because it's an understandable motivation. Uh, but yeah, she's a crazy lady. And I mean, they make her as um in certain points, she as, is as unsympathetic as any of the Sawyer clan. I mean, because she's just she's fucking evil. I mean, hey, she's gonna show up in your superhero account because she was in that one stupid episode of Gotham, right? I believe you're right. <laughs> that was when I was still watching the show. Uh, all right, I don't remember her now. You remember? I was- I only watched, what did I watch, one season? She was on, like, episode three, dude. Oh, really? I don't fucking remember Or maybe that. even episode two. I remember yeah. it was, like, episode two was yeah. Lily Taylor, and then all of a, uh, and then already episode three we were doing, like, Balloon Man. I remember that balloon. Yeah, that show really was, ugh, I'm sorry. I know it's got a lot of fans. <laughs> I know. Anyway, sorry I cut you off there. Oh, no, 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 please. Um, so, uh, I don't remember what I was saying. What was I saying? Was I saying anything? Uh, something about Lily Taylor. I don't know. Hey. Well, she's really, really good. I mean, I think that most of the actors in this movie are really good, and only one real, only one of the characters I just found un, I couldn't take, maybe two. Who? Ike and Clarice were tough to, to deal with for so long. They're just so vicious. Oh, and, right. When they uh, escape the, the mental hospital, yeah, it's I, I it's mean, in a foursome and it, or a fivesome. It's Lizzie yeah. and yeah. the handsome Southerner and his fat friend and then right. these two crazy people who are just like a shitty like Bonnie and Clyde couple. Exactly. They're they're like a, a honey bunny and uh, mm-hmm. they're Joker and Harley. Like that's what they're trying to do. <laughs> they're natural born killers. They're just They that. are. And that's exactly what it is. It's natural born killers. Mickey and whatever their name is. Mickey and Mallory? Yeah, sure. I yeah, I hate that movie. Julia yeah. Lewis and Woody Harrelson. <laughs> right, right. And uh they're just there's too much, and I mean that the, when they they go to a diner for some reason, Bud Jackson and Nurse Lizzie can't break away from these two fucking fools before they get a gun. They don't even have a gun at first. He's holding them at knife point. It's like he's got Jackson and Bud. All yeah. they need to do with the two of them is overpower. This I was psychopath. annoyed we broke out of the mental hospital so fast. I wanted to spend some more time in there, like uh, Cult of Chucky. <laughs> Well, I like the sequence when in that breakout when they're going to said said Leatherface is about to get electroshock and he just fucking breaks the the straps and then he looks over at Ike and he's like, you won't let me out of here. Sure. <laughs> that was pretty good. But so they, they they get on the run and they go to this diner and, you know, they, they get a gun from the cop behind them. But then there was just one thing that really just left. There's always something in these movies that just leaves a, a bad taste in my mouth. And, you know, the one thing in this movie, what, well, there's a couple. But the main one was, you know, they kill these people in the diner. Fine. It's a robbery. We're leaving the diner. And we have to have a, a, a shot, no pun intended, of this poor girl l- sitting against the diner and the gun is pointed at her head and she there's no reason for her to be executed and it's just lingered on and it's like you know that bothered you it did because it was like it, it i know in a gratuitous movie it feels silly to point out gratuity but, but, they, like, but it, no 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 but no, i agree I, with you the movie is gratuitous 
and it go it tries to be gross too much of the time. It does, but this was just cruel. There was no reason for that. Like they've already killed like six people in this diner, and this girl's just leaning against the counter, crying and sobbing and bleeding, and he just points the shotgun at her fucking head. Or she does. I don't remember if it's Ike or Clarice at that point. And they just blow her head ah, out. Cruelty's fine with me. Kill them all. She probably deserves to be dead. I, I, uh, my problem is with is with gross stuff. Oh, I just I agree with you, but I also didn't like that. But what about the scene? We passed the scene where there's like a hairless mouse, and they like shove it down a girl's mouth. That's Clarice. Yeah, that's Clarice sh- shoving it down some girl's that's mouth. That's disgusting. Well, Clarice and this guy are the source of most of the misery in this movie. The, at, I, I agree. Yeah, they they fuck during the prison, and she starts to blow him during the riot, which I liked. That's an interesting place for a blowjob. <laughs> and, uh, but they fuck a lot in this movie, which leads to the worst part of the movie, when they they have killed someone, right? There's a corpse in this. No, they didn't kill it. It was just dead. Oh, they find it's like a, a dead body. Inexplicable dead body. Right. It's not linked to anything. Somebody hanged themselves. So they start. Shower. They start to fuck, bro. I looked away in front of this dead body. She takes her, she pops all her clothes off. First, we get full backle nudity. But then they do an interesting thing where we cut to the frontal nudity, and her front is all burnt to shit. Yeah. It's, it's really just like nice. super scarred up. Um, yeah. But then, forget that. Did you look no. away? Do you see, did you see what happened next? No, 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 I know what you're talking about, and I and I kind of looked like I didn't fully look away because I needed to watch the fucking film. Yeah, but like, first she's fucking him; she's on top. Yeah. Then they switch to doggy style. That's right. This is a sex scene with multiple positions, and yeah. and she, he so he's fucking her from behind. She leans; she's facing this corpse, yeah, and she put she, the corpse on the bed. Yeah, yeah. And then she leans into the corpse, and while he's fucking her, she just starts making out with this corpse, full tongue kissing this corpse. I mean, that's that's where that's when we're in territory where it's just like these guys just look desperate. These directors it was fucking disgusting. But but then it goes on like that forever, man. Like honestly, yeah. once they left the mental institution, I was like out on this movie because I mean, it, it's not long after that. Where they have to like hide outside from like the cops or something. Side of a carcass. Yeah, yeah. it's like a, the fucking tauntaun scene in in Empire. They <laughs> they like rip open this animal and just hide. it's like an elk or something, and they hide inside of it. An elk. I don't fucking know. <laughs> or just a cow. Oh baby. <laughs> I don't know if they're in the Rocky Mountains or anything. You know. <laughs> Then they find this crazy caribou well, in the middle of Houston. In my notes, because I'm an idiot, I just wrote Tauntaun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so you f- they find out that Leatherface is this guy, and then st- he murders Stephen Dorff, and Stephen Dorff becomes the first ever chainsaw murder, and then he also becomes the first ever face on Leatherface's face. <laughs> And then yeah. and then Lizzie, he fucking cuts her head off. He kills Lizzie. I mean, <sighs> she's she's supposed to be the final girl, but since it's a prequel, you can't really have a final girl because then well, there's know, loose ends that the other movie should have dealt with. Yeah, true. And I mean, you know, you skipped over some stuff, and that's fine. But I mean, I, I did think it was effective with Sam Strike Jackson. Uh, the the reveal there, um, I. It's a good I reveal, mean, it, honestly. Like the, it's their idea for the movie. Yeah, they, and I they, they went into this movie shooting. building a movie around that reveal. There's no doubt that's all they had because the rest is a geek show. Yeah, it's just a fucking geek show. Well, and listen I, to but... you, fucking Roger Ebert. <laughs> <laughs> He did like saying that. You're that was right. a great phrase from Ebert. Geek show, yeah. Uh, but like, I, I did. I was in in with the movie. I mean, I I didn't. Uh, besides, Ike and Clarice were a big turnoff, and but besides that, hairless I mean, ma- hairless rat in the in the mouth. I was I was oh, done. I was, was done. Awful. 
That was awful. The 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 corpse goes beyond words, and and the uh, and the killing of that girl in the diner. I I didn't care, you know. But but I mean, I thought the sequences with them on the lamb was were were pretty well directed. I mean, I thought there was like a sure hand. Not me. Technically, it was too dark. See, I didn't feel that. I the, you were uh, that, that's that's 2003's movie to me. I didn't feel like this movie looked like that. I thought this movie looked pretty decent. I mean, but I mean, you know, ultimately it doesn't add up to much. But I, I it was better than I thought it was going to be. Not I'll, me. It was worse than I thought it would be. And I I don't even think it's a better Texas Chainsaw prequel than Texas Chainsaw: The Beginning. That's the yeah okay yeah no I disagree I disagree I like this more than you there's no doubt I I was in for a lot of this movie I mean a, a good deal of it but uh, I'm still this giving. was like barely a movie to me honestly like I I think it's probably my least favorite um I was Not like shit. actually I was no. fluctuating between least favorite and second least favorite and and I think it might even be worse than the Beale one because it, that one at least like looks like a movie. Mm. <laughs> I think this looks like a movie. I, don't think this, so. I disagree. I, I think this movie is is filmed well. I think it looks good. Um, I don't know. I would believe you if, like, you told me this was like a fan film. Oh come on! It doesn't look like that. I would. I would be like, wow, it's really well done. Like they they shot it well, but that's harsh. I mean, the, the acting is good. You got Steven Dorff doing his angry, grizzled white guy cop thing. He he's good in it. Lily Taylor's really good. You know, Dorf I, I don't. Dorf, I hate that he's squandering this true detective thing. This was before. That. I know, but now he's on that shitty show, Deputy. Oh, uh, yeah, he got so much. You're right, because he came back. That was a comeback, man. That was like a, mm-hmm. a great role for oh, him. Oh, he was a bolt from the blue. It was so good in that. Yeah. Oh, well. well Can't see. all be blood and wine. What's that, blood and wine? The movie you say, what's that, every oh. time. <laughs> Bob Raffleson's masterpiece from the 90s. It's with not Michael. that documentary about Maynard James Keenan no. having a vineyard. No, it's not. It's uh, Jack Nicholson, Michael Kine, Stephen Dorff, and J-Lo. I don't know why you're not all over that movie. I don't either. And Bob Raffleson. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I still don't believe it exists. What the fuck is wrong with you? I don't get why you haven't seen that, at least to appease me and then trash it. What do you give Leatherface? <laughs> two stars. I'll give it a one. Who's your M- MVP, Lily Taylor? <laughs> These are all solid twos. No, and they're one. not. This is the fir- This is a one. Uh, this is two. Easily two. Uh, Lily uh, Taylor's Liz- MVP. Yeah. Yeah, she's mine. LVP? Uh, Clarice. No, I'm going with the guy. Ike, fair enough. Yeah, I thought Clarice was was slightly a better presence than Ike. They were just both so unpleasant. I, 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 I couldn't... To me, I was thinking, like, if I saw this same actress playing a psychopath in a different movie, I could potentially enjoy that. I don't think I would enjoy the actor. Yeah, oh, uh, that's that's an interesting take on it. Yeah, that that's possible. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what potential he shows for anything. No. Yeah. All right, I got a quick uh, superhero count. Steven Dorf Blade. Yeah, can you say his character's name? Because it's I so don't fucking... recall. Deacon Frost. <laughs> that is good. <laughs> Lily Taylor as Patty in Gotham. Christopher Adamson, who played, Do- oh, he was Doctor Lang. He played oh, the yeah. doctor. He was all he, right. He was. Uh, he was. He was. Uh, he played Mean Machine in the 1995 movie Judge Dredd. Ooh, have you ever seen Mean Machine, the uh, great prison soccer movie with Vinnie Jones? No, I, no, I did not. I, I've actually heard it's quite good. It's all right. Yeah, I didn't see that. Isn't that guy Richie? I think uh, it was produced by Guy Ritchie. Uh, it certainly looks like it. And uh, last but not least. Oh, we least, didn't even fucking talk about Finn Jones. That's okay. Last but not least on the superhero account, Mr. Iron Fist cuffs himself. Finn Jones is Iron Fist. And he he's, is he's just this. a fucking, he's like second in command to Stephen Dorff in this movie. It, yeah, it's, it, it's a nothing role. Yeah, man. Uh, Finn fucking Jones. I, I, you know, having seen this after watching uh, Iron Fist, 
it was very funny because you see him in this and uh, can you imagine watching this and thinking now that's a star Yeah, no, I can't. I mean, <laughs> I would just think of him. I thought of him in this, honestly, just kind of like you think of a lot of the actors in a lot of these. He's movies fucking where you're like, wallpaper. Yeah, like I wonder. You, you just go, oh, I wonder what if what happened to that guy. Nah, he's a handsome and then, guy. Like, yeah, and then you find out later, like, oh my god, like if you were like not connected to the world for a while, then you're like. Hey, did you know they did a show uh, based on the Iron Fist character? Oh yeah, who did get to play him? Uh, Finn Jones. This he is the in- kind of this is the kind of actor. If you it, like, if you told me he had a recurring role on Chicago Fire or Blue Bloods, I wouldn't believe you. I'd be like, wait, are you sure he wasn't just a guest star? <laughs> recurring, seriously. <laughs> Another, uh, he's another uh, Brit too, isn't he? Fucking Finn Jones. He's got to be with that name. Yeah, he's Game of Thrones. That's right. That's what he was on. He's one Fucking of those pieces Game of shit. I read that aye, the aye. fat kid who you think is going to be Leatherface played young Hodor on Game of Thrones. Get out! If that of here. means anything to anybody. I didn't know. I mean, I know who Hodor is. I can't believe I'm saying those words. <laughs> Just even that character's name. I don't Hodor. say things like he's, that. He's, he's the one who only says his name, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, I don't say... I love that. That's smart. That's... <laughs> I don't ever say... There is, you ever say a sentence that, like, you don't ever say, and it feels weird saying yeah. it? Like, yeah, like, I don't say things like that. Like, like oh, he, he was Hodor on... <laughs> Game of Thrones. Like, you'll never catch me saying, like... In your normal wonder, life, talking about Hodor. I wonder what Hobbit... Which which uh, region of Middle Earth did that Hobbit inhabit? Like, I don't say things like that. It's very unusual for me. Right, right. What I'm trying to say is that fantasy isn't my thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got a big moment coming up. We oh, the a- rankings. I have them written down. I'm ready to do it. Look at this guy. Now, do you, if I'm, if I have, I have all the numbers written, but do you know what they yeah, are? Yeah, I, I do. I do. Good, you're going to be able to help me out. All right. All worst right. to best, best to worst. We'll do, we do worst to best. All right. The worst. It's Leatherface, the eighth, the most recent movie. It's not. Uh, it's Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Is still oh, the- come now. Still the worst That's thing so I had to stupid. endure. It's the worst thing I had to endure in this entire endeavor. All right. This, yep. All right. Number seven is. I can't believe you. Other face that that's equally silly. Fuck that movie. Some My, of the we had to go through that was the second most worst for me is the Beale one Marcus Nispel remake Platinum Dunes. What number is that? That's the fifth movie. That is my okay, second. Okay, great. At that symbiosis where I didn't expect it. That is the second worst. Yeah. Number six. All right. The sixth six, yeah. best. Sixth best. I have here Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Ooh. All right. No. Sorry. Uh, mine is the Matthew McConaughey, sure. Renee Zellweger. Number four. Next generation. Number five for me is Texas and and by the way I would say now we're up to movies I recommend you watch <laughs> I can't say that yeah. at all number uh, 5 for me I think there are 5 watchable Texas Chainsaw movies I I wish I was 1 fifth of the way we <laughs> 5 for me is uh Texas Chainsaw Massacre the beginning now that is in it was that the sixth an... Texas Chainsaw movie. Mine too. Okay. All right. Number four for me. That two and two. Go ahead. Is Texas Chainsaw Massacre: The Next Generation with uh, McConaughey and Zellweger? Okay. All right. My uh, fourth best, fourth, fifth worst, fourth best is Leatherface. That's ridiculous. The third best is Texas. Chainsaw 3D. That's mine. Love it. Jeez. Second right. best is, of course, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Right. 
The second best for me is Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Ah, oh, so that was pretty I... low on mine, man. That was number six. Right. No, that's the second best one. I had a good time during that Okay, movie. so you did put the first one as the best one. Oh, yes. All right, I wasn't 100% sure, frankly. Uh, uh, no, I get it. I know, because I wasn't that big a fan. It's the only movie I gave three stars to. I didn't give. Any, I never gave out a three-star rating it's after the only that. One I gave a five to. <laughs> True, right, 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 and uh, yeah, I mean, I under, I get, I explained already in the first episode, but you know, I get its place in the canon. But uh, the only one that was was really like a fun time for me was the third one because it was kind of more up my alley. But uh, you were overall a much bigger fan of this whole uh, franchise than I was. That's for sure. 